it's Shelby here. Welcome back to A Little Literary Love. I'm glad you all are with me today. Today's video is going to be another book recommendation video. Um, we're going to be talking at the, I would think, a pretty unique trope. I don't see it in a ton of books, but it's one of my favorite tropes. Um, so yeah, so we're just going to get right into it. Before um, I talk about all those books, I do just want to say, um, you know, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. If you like my content, I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so, um, like I said, this is a pretty unique trope, um, language barrier. I have only found like a handful of books that this trope is in but then when I realized that this was a trope and then I kept finding it like it is this is like just my bread and butter I gobble this up I love language barrier in books I just love that it creates this um somewhat of a conflict between the two characters or at least a barrier between the two characters that they have to try to overcome um try to find other ways to communicate with one another um and in the process how they fall in love amongst the language barrier it's just oh, i love it so much um so i do want to say before we get to the books that a lot of Ruby Dixon books are going to be featured on this. So I figured it would just be fitting to wear my Ruby Dixon Ice Planet Barbarians Christmas sweater. So I wanted to show that off. Um, so it says, I'm dreaming of a blue Christmas. And then it's got the blue alien horns from it. I love this sweater. I'm so happy that I got it. I always wear Christmas sweaters. I like around Christmas time. Like I like getting those like fun, um, funky, um, Christmas sweaters or like, uh, that have like pop culture, like references to them. I usually get a new Christmas sweater like every year or about every year and I always wear them. So I'm so happy that I got this one, even though I'm pretty sure nobody in my family is going to understand if I wear this around them, but it's fine. Um, so like I said, this is going to feature a lot of Ruby Dixon books. Um, most of her series, cause most of her stuff is like alien romances. She has, uh, she has a few that aren't, but the vast majority of her series are alien romances and the vast majority of them also take like feature a language barrier between a human woman and an alien that they have different, um, different languages so they can't understand each other. So that being said, first book that I have to recommend is the OG Ruby Dixon book, Ice Planet Barbarians, the very first book that started her whole saga of alien romances and all of the, um, all of the uh, side series that branched off of this one series. So if you've been living under a rock and you haven't heard of this series, this first book features our heroine Georgie. She has been captured by aliens and she is in this ship with among a bunch of other human women who are being taken to basically become sex slaves. Um, but in the process of their journey to wherever they're going, their alien ship crash lands on this ice planet and pretty well most of the aliens that are on the ship die during the crash and then these human women who have survived they're trying to figure out what they're going to do so Georgie has been elected to leave the ship and go try to find food shelter whatever so that these human women can survive so on her journey to try to find help she comes across this big blue alien who is Vectal and Vectal is the chief of his clan um and his clan has basically been dying out because there are not enough women being born into the clan um so then he fig he finds Georgie and he is kind of attracted to her and he starts to help her and clothe her and feed her and they form like a relationship. So like I said, there is a language barrier because Vectal cannot understand Georgie. Georgie cannot understand Vectal. They have different languages, but it's very funny and cute how they go about that and how they start to learn from each other and uh, communicate with one another. Um, I love this. Um, 
I do want to say that most of Ruby Dixon's books are very formulaic, if that's even a word. They and they're pretty campy too, but they're like campy in a good way. Um, steam on this is also pretty high. So if you're somebody that's new to steam, I think this is a be a good book to like start out with. Um, it's just just very sweet. But like this whole series has become such a comfort read for me. Like if I'm not feeling like into any of the books that I'm reading, sometimes I'll just go back to this and reread this again just because it's such a like feel good book for me now. Um, and I love it. Then the next book that I have to recommend is going to be the fourth book of the Ice Planet, Bar Planet Barbarian series, which for the most part, most of the books in this series somewhat take on the language barrier trope. But the fourth one I'm going to specifically recommend, which is Barbarian Mine, which does have a special edition cover now, but I have not actually gotten my physical copy of it. I love these special edition covers. And if they make it of the entire series, I you betcha I'm definitely going to get all of them at some point. Anyway, so Barbarian Mine, um, this is, like again, the fourth book of the series. Um, this is about another one, another woman from the crashed ship. Um, she gets, she's out like walking around and she gets um, bashed on the head by one of the blue alien guys and is kidnapped. He takes her and takes her to a cave because he likes her and wants her to be his like mate. Um, so, <laughs> I love this. The language we're in this one actually is our heroine is deaf. So, it's very cute how our hero, like, just the miscommunication that happens between them. But then once he, like, figures out that she can't hear anything, he he's just so freaking sweet. <laughs> he does whatever he can to try to accommodate for that um like and then he also starts to try to learn like sign language for her so that they can communicate and just, ugh, it's so freaking cute I loved it so much then moving on to a different series from Marie Dixon. Um, now we're going to the first book of the Ice Home series. So this is a spinoff from Ice Planet Barbarians. In one of the books later on in the Ice Planet Barbarian series, there is a, another ship that lands on their planet that has captured women, but it also has some other male captured um, aliens. And these women like start to like wake up. Um, so in this one, Lauren, Lauren's barbarian, um, some of the, there's like two or three, I can't remember the women that, um, they're like, they're in these like little like stasis pods on the ship. Um, it gets float, they float out to sea to this like, um, island that is on the ice planet, planet, I guess. Um, and it's a very like tropical place. So she wakes up and finds that there is this blue alien standing over her. So this blue alien is a little bit different from the uh, blue aliens of the Ice Planet Barbarian series um, in that he's still blue, but he has four arms. So it's kind of like very similar to the first book of the Ice Planet Barbarian series. It's just this woman and she meets this blue alien and they cannot communicate to each other. So they're just kind of working through that language barrier. Um, but yes, very cute. I love it. Then the last Ruby Dixon book that I have to recommend in this recommendation video um, is going to be Fire and His Blood. This is the first book in her Fire Blood Dragon series. Honestly, again, 
basically every book in this series features a language barrier, the language barrier trope. Um, so I'm just going to recommend this first book, but the rest of the series is really great too. This one is more, it's like sci-fi, but this one is more like earth. Um, it's very post-apocalyptic, um, in this earth dragons have come to earth and they're basically terrorizing the planet. Um, a lot of the population has been killed off from when the dragons came to earth. Um, um, people live in these like fort cities and uh, with to try to protect themselves against the dragons. So our heroine of this story, she gets into a lot of trouble because she goes and ventures outside of the fort to try to scavenge for different items and you're not supposed to do that. So in punishment for her crimes, um, they decide to take her to this very tall building and basically chain her up and sacrifice her to a dragon that has been circling around the fort to try to appease the dragon and get it to go away. So she's there, the dragon comes and she's freaking out because she's like, oh my God, I'm going to die. This dragon's going to eat me. Um, but the dragon like smells her and then turns into a like can change and shift into more of a human looking person um like I said basically looks human but they're more like yellowish skin and then they have like scales on them kind of like a dragon and so she's like oh okay so it has that language barrier he you get like his perspective too and from smelling her he they she he thinks she smells really great and thinks that she should be his mate. So there's a bunch of miscommunication along with that as well um, that they have to work through and just figuring out what they're going to do and him wanting to get with her kind of thing. Okay, so moving on from Ruby Dixon, but now I have a few more um, sci-fi romances to recommend and then at the very end I do have one historical romance to recommend. So the next one is going to be Ensnared by Tiffany Roberts. This is the first book in I don't remember what this series is called. Um, this is the only one that I've actually read of the series. I need to read the others but this one is really good. This is about like spider aliens um, and our hero of this story he, uh, for his, like, clan, he's basically, like, a hunter. He goes out and into the woods and hunts for different things to bring back to his clan. Um, and while he's out exploring, he finds this crashed ship. Um, he doesn't realize what it is. Um, and he finds a sleeping woman on board. And he accidentally wakes her up. So then after he wakes her up, then he has to try to protect her because he realizes that she's very uh, fragile. Um, like her skin is much softer than his. She doesn't have any like protective like plating like he does. Um, she doesn't know how to survive on her own. So he has to try to protect her. He takes her to this little, his cabin basic kind of, that he has out in the woods. Um, he tries to feed her and it's just it's very sweet um I would consider this more like a pretty slow burn type of romance it takes a while for them to kind of warm up to each other and to build the romance that they end up having um and again it has that language barrier they cannot understand each other but they go through the whole motion of like trying to learn each other's languages so that they can communicate with each other um and overall this is very sweet then I have Transcendence by Shay Savage. Um, this is a pretty unique romance. This is a time travel romance. This, our heroine is, at the beginning of the book, is um, at a museum with a class, I think. And she ends up touching this object and then she time travels to the age of like where cavemen were a thing. And she falls into like a trap that our caveman hero of this story set to try to like hunt and he finds her and he's like what the freak is this person <laughs> 
so again they cannot understand each other they um our hero has a very 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 basic language of sorts like it's mostly like consonants and like like one word or like grunts gestures kind of thing it's not a very advanced language like at all so it takes him a lot of time to be able to understand her so she tries to like teach him language um but again it's that kind of the same with most of the other books in this uh recommendations video um she cannot fend for herself so he has to try to protect her and they work together to try to hunt to feed themselves and in the process they do end up falling in love with each other Then the next book that I have to recommend is actually a book that I am currently reading. Um, so I haven't finished it, but I've loved it so much so far that I just thought I would go ahead and put it on here. That is going to be Hunter. Um, this is the second book of the Prison Planet series by Emmy Chandler. I've been really enjoying this series so far. Um, so this whole series is about these people that have committed crimes. So, um, in this world, they have made these planets that are just designated as like prisons. Um, so she gets sent there. So our heroine of this story, um, there's different zones on this planet. She has gone to this zone and is being made to be basically a like sex worker, um, to be like a prostitute for these wealthy people that have come to the planet to watch um, hunters hunt down death row inmates. So there's like this area and there's like TV screens that they can watch. Um, basically it's just one like wealthy person has decided to wants to pay in and gets geared up and is put into this enclosure along with a death row inmate and they get like equipment to hunt that person down and kill them. And that's how like death row inmates are supposed to be executed so that is how these death row inmates are to be executed they get hunted down um so in the process so like i said our heroine is supposed to be a sex slave and pleasure these wealthy people that are watching the spectacle but she is a virgin and she's very scared and are this man that she's in a room with tries to have sex with her and she's not okay with it and she accidentally kills him by when she's trying to fend for herself so they find out and so they're like well you just killed somebody that's illegal so now you are a death row inmate because murder automatically um is a death sentence. So they throw her into this area where there's already an inmate being hunted and they find each other and they have to try to help each other to protect each other to try to get away from this person that is hunting both of them. Um, and in this there is a language barrier because our inmate hero of the story, he has his planet has a different language than what she knows so there's like a universal um language that everybody is supposed to learn so that's what our heroine knows but he like his I think it says at one point that his father didn't want them to learn the universal language and wanted them to continue to use their home planet language um so there's a little bit of language barrier but with that um and it's very dicey that they don't really understand each other or they're trying to work through understanding each other because like I said, they're in like a life or death situation trying to run away from this person that is wanting to hunt them and kill them. But like I said, I'm still reading this, but it's been really, really good so far and I've really enjoyed it. Then the last book that I have to recommend is not a sci-fi romance. This is actually a historical romance. This is going to be Never Seduce a Scott by Maya Banks. Um, I believe this is the first book of a series, like the Armstrongs and something series. I don't remember. 
Um, but this one is a Highlander romance. This features an arranged marriage between the daughter and the son of two like rival clans. Um, they're supposed to get married to try to form peace between the clans. Um, but they're, the heroine the family is a little bit worried about it um, because she is seen as being touched. Um, she does not speak. Um, so they are worried how the other clan is going to treat her. Um, but when she meets her husband, um, she, they end up, and he ends up figuring out that she isn't necessarily that she can't speak. It's that she can't hear. So our heroine is deaf and she has not told anybody that she cannot hear, but for some, like, I guess just to kind of help with this, like, star-crossed lovers almost kind of thing that they're like fated to be together um our heroine can actually feel the vibrations of when her new husband speaks and it's very like comforting for her and then with this because he does figure out that she's deaf he goes out of his way to try to be accommodating for her and to try to learn a little bit um somewhat a little bit of like sign language and helping her with like talking and it's just it's so freaking cute and I loved it so much because our hero of this story is just so doting and patient and sweet to our heroine and it's just beautiful so those are going to be my recommendations for this video. If you have other books that fit this trope, please leave a comment down below because like I said, this is my bread and butter. I gobble this up. I love it so much and I don't find it in enough stories and I want to have, I want to find more. Um, but anyway, if you like this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up button. And again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you like my content, please do so. And I really, I really appreciate it. Otherwise, I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys.